Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about what actually happened at the Arnold Classic. Why did William Bonac close? Everybody was so confused, including myself. On all the videos and the photos, and from the people who were actually there in the audience, uh, very close to the stage, everybody felt like Bonac deserved to win. Here on this photo you can see he was much sharper, he was just better. But the judges saw it differently. Some people thought it's just politics, some people thought it's a mistake, and we all wanted the judges to actually explain what happened. Jim Mannion, the president of the IBB and an IBB judge, actually explained, uh, not really to the public, he never really made a public statement, but he explained what he thought, how, how Bonnet lost, he explained that to Guy Cisternino, and uh, Guy shared that with us on the Fuad Abiyad's podcast. And you guys probably know that Guy Cisternino is one of the most connected people in the bodybuilding industry. He knows everybody and everybody loves him. So he talked to Jim Mannion after the show. And here is what uh, Jim explained to him, why Brandon won. Well, I talked to Jim yesterday for about 45 minutes. He broke Who's down Jim? Who's Jim? Okay. Man. He broke down to me why Brandon won. Because I told him that I thought I, ha I had Bonac winning. Yeah. Yeah, and he say? said one of the one of the things that that Bonac that the judges didn't like was that he said he was very washed out in the abs. It almost looked like he didn't have any abs at all. Yeah, he was. And then, I'm going to show you something to, go, to refer to that. But go on. And then, um, which which I understood because I yeah. saw that too. And then he made reference to how bad his gyna was, which was very relevant in every pose. Yeah. Um, Bonac. And then he said that Brandon was like very flowing, very hard. And I, I told him, I said. I wasn't that close, but when you were watching it from where, you know, we weren't far back, me and Branch, but it it was hard to see under the lights how hard Brandon was. So he didn't look as hard, I guess, he, as he was when you were closer. All right, so there you go. We got an explanation. Do I agree with the decision of the judges based on this explanation? We're going to talk about that in a second. First, let's check these facts. Let's see if he was actually right. So here in this photo, you can see two of the things that he was talking about. So Bonac had a bad, bad case of gyno, and his abs are washed up, there was no detail, his stomach was a, a mess, it was bad. And I saw both of those things. So as you can see right here, the gyno is very prominent. Now, guys, you know I'm from Europe, and over here in IBB, in European IBB, gyno is marked down. It's not something the judges would look away from. The rules over here are much more strict. Like, all the poses have to be done in a certain way. This would be the correct way in IBB. One leg must be behind. And if you do it the way it suits your physique, like Brandon is doing right here, it would be wrong and you would be marked down. Also, in classic physique, we have a mandatory vacuum pose. So everybody needs to learn how to do a vacuum. But that's IBB. IBB is all about strict, strict roles. There isn't much room for subjectivity, while in the MPC or IBB Pro League, it's always been a different story. Guys with gyno, guys with guts would win shows, would place higher than the guys who were more aesthetic if they looked better overall. Was that the case with Bonek and Brandon? I felt like what Bonek brought was enough. Yeah, he brought gyno and bad stomach, but I still think overall he was a better package. But the judges didn't see it that way, and there is another argument, and I, and I can't argue with this. Uh, they said that Brandon looked much better, much harder in person from the judges' uh, perspective, from that first, very first row. So, I mean, guys, I don't know. You guys saw in my last video that Jose Raymond and Milo Sharchev, both very, very good experts on bodybuilding who were in fourth row, which is very close to the stage, saw Bonac winning it clearly. But hey, Jim Mannion is saying that it was a little bit different uh, from, his, uh, from his perspective and that Brandon was harder than we thought. Well, you guys can agree or disagree, but at least you got some explanation. So guys, please comment down below, I'm really curious, what do you think about uh, what Jim Mannion said? Does it make sense to you? Whatever your thoughts are, please tell me in the comment section. Boston Pro is in a couple of days, and this is Bonek right now, looking like an absolute freak. So since they robbed him from a, from a pro win and a qualification for Mr. Olympia at the Arnold Classic, they will, I'm sure they will let him win this Boston Pro. Um, I don't think anybody is gonna get close. 
to him. He was uh, in a very strong second. Well, actually, in most people's eyes, he was in a very strong first. But anyways, without Brandon at the Boston, this guy is gonna win it. Uh, Brandon is actually not doing it, which I would say it's, it's, it's understandable, but... I don't know, because look, he won the Arnold Classic, and if the judging was right, then he would be the favorite to win the Boston Pro too. And the prize money, the Boston Pro, is pretty good. I'm not sure exactly how much, but I know they're giving away a truck. So it would be a nice thing for Brandon to win, but I believe he's just scared. And also, he just won $200,000 at the Arnold, which is probably something we didn't really see him do, because he's second at the Mr. Olympia, he's the runner-up, so many people thought he's gonna just focus on the Mr. Olympia, however, he did the Arnold, he won it, and that's gonna do it for him, he's gonna do the, the Olympia next, and the Bonac, he's gonna win the show, probably, and we have pretty much the entire uh, Arnold Classic lineup, with some addition, and uh, without... Uh, Brett Wilkin. So letting you guys know I'm not competing moving forward anytime soon. Um, I went all in on this Arnold and I kind of, you know, even when people were asking me if I was doing the Boston show, which is, you know, Friday and Saturday, I was already saying that probably not. You know, I, I hadn't even thought about it because I was so all in, as you guys saw on the Arnold, I'm a top tier guy and I still have work to do. So there's no reason to keep competing right now. I may look at something later in the year. Um, you know, right before the Olympia or something like that, but um, maybe that last qualification. But it's mainly going to just be based off this progress these next five to six months, and then we'll go from there. So, so there you go, guys. Uh, it's very unfortunate, at least for me, that we're not going to see Brad uh, again on the stage. The reasoning behind this decision is that he still needs to work in the off season and improve on his physique. And I can't say I don't see where he is coming from with this. I understand if he wants to beat guys like Brandon Curry, like William Bonac, he needs to add a lot more tissue, that's for sure. I mean, upper body, he's very close to like the limit, but the legs need more details and just overall size. So if he wants to like be one of the top, top guys at the Mr. Olympia, as he says he's a top tier bodybuilder now, which is pretty true. If he wants to be at the very top, yes, he needs improvements. But could he place well at the Boston Pro if he made some changes in this week, like as far as speaking better, I think he could have redeemed himself. I think he had a chance. I don't really see him beating William Bonek. I don't really see him beating Steve Kuklo. But the other guys... I think he had a chance, if he came a little bit sharper, a little bit uh, fuller in the legs, if he changed a couple of things, I think he could have been like third at the Boston Pro, top 3, a medal, bronze medal, I think that would be a huge success, but uh, apparently he decided to, to do it the other way, just to focus on the offseason, on growing, making improvements, and um, compete later this year, try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, which is a sound tactic for sure, but as a fan, I would love to see Brett uh, do that Boston Pro, but you know, it is what it is, unfortunately he's not doing it. Alright, next we have an update of another classic physique competitor, Brian Jones, and yeah guys, this is what you need to look like if you want to do the classic physique. Just joking, just joking, yeah, Brian Jones used to do the classic physique until recently, and he was also really massive doing the classic physique, but he grew, he grew a lot, since he decided to do the open, which is definitely a division suited for him, because this guy is a freaking natural born mass monster. I'm not saying he's natural, of course he's enhanced, but he has a gift, I mean, look at this kind of bubbly kind of kind of muscle like he has all this roundness everything is popping it's so bubbly like it's, it's insane it's 3d it, it's crazy small waist crazy big legs crazy big arms insane shoulders full and round chest everything is just just ridiculous this guy is an absolute freak and what's crazy is that he's only 244 and he's a tall guy i believe he's six foot one I think he's taller than maybe six foot two even. I think he's taller than Chris Bumster. And Chris is six foot one. So at that height, I would expect him to be like close to 300 pounds. Wouldn't you? I mean, he's very tall and he's really big, but he's only 244. I guess that's why he used to do the classic physique. But uh, I mean, if he really wants to be competitive in open bodybuilding, he needs to be bigger. 
because compared to the other guys on stage, you're gonna you're gonna see how how small he actually. Is. I'm not saying he's small, but open guys. I mean, like Steve Kuklo, who is six foot, is two seventy five. Two right now he's actually two seventy seven um, on stage. So I mean, shredded. So uh, and this guy is also not in shape. So he would be like uh, two thirty maybe on on stage. And I'm not trying to talk this guy down, I'm saying if he actually grew enough, like Steve Kukla, for example, if he got like, let's say 270, which is 25 pounds on top of this, and actually he would be comparable on stage one x one other with this kind of physique, with this kind of, with this kind of shape, how freaky would that be? How ridiculous would he look with another 25 pounds? And again, Steve Kukla is 6 foot and 275. So if this guy is six foot two, he would have to be like bigger to match Steve Kuklo with size. But I don't think he needs to be that big. With his shape, he can be much smaller and still beat the other guys. Uh, I mean, with his proportions, it's just ridiculous. Look at this freak of nature. This is just insane. This is just ridiculous. It's life is not fair. Seriously, man. I mean, life is just not fair. Why don't we all have genetics like this? <laughs> well, it is what it is. We wouldn't be admiring this guy's physique so much if everybody could have it. So, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding videos and uh, coverage of Boston Pro, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.